Hi, I'm Lydia Waheto. I'm a Nairobi-based uh, food and product photographer. In this video, we'll be continuing with a discussion on artificial lighting for food photography. So um, just before getting into um, lighting modifiers, I wanted to talk about soft lighting versus hard lighting for food photography. Um, uh, I think the discussion has been a lot on soft lighting and how good soft lighting is uh, is for food photography. Uh, remember, uh, a lot of the times when you're lighting f food, you want to emulate the sun, but also you want the food to look natural, you want it to look um, edible, you want it to look tasty. So a lot of the times, um, soft lighting does that. Uh, but that rule can also be broken. There are plenty of people who are using hard lighting for food photography, and their food still looks great. Um, it still looks appetizing. So you can experiment with both um, with both styles of lighting. See what works for you. See what your style will would be, or which lighting style you prefer, or you'd like to be. Uh, pursuing uh, into into the future, but remember to stay flexible as well, uh, because different clients will like different styles of lighting. Have your own style, but be flexible when it calls for it. Um, so, uh, soft lighting. There are various ways to achieve it. Uh, for instance, you can use an octa box, which is a large round light modifier. Uh, you, you can use it with your flash or speed light. You can use it with your uh, strobe. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's so easy to set up as well, and it gets you the result, results that you need. If you don't have an octa box, there are other modifiers, like a reflector head that you can use in conjunction, conjunction with a diffuser to just soften the light a bit. And the bigger the diffuser, the larger your light source will be, making it much softer. Um, then there's also um, other uh, types of modifiers, like there's a square uh, light modifier. So it depends with what you have. Use what you have, but uh, know how to just tweak your lighting so that if you want it softer, you can get it much, much softer. If you want it harder, how to get it hard. So one of the ways to just make sure your light is harder if you're going for the hard look is to remove the diffuser if you're using a soft box remove the diffusion part of the of the modifier um, if you're using a speed light just use a speed light um, without using any uh, sort of diffuser if you're using a reflector head remove that um, diffusion material on top of it that will make your light hard you can still use the reflector head or you can still use the Octa box, but without the diffusion element, so that the, your light is still directional, but it won't be soft. Um, there are very many people who've made uh, hard lighting look so good. Uh, so experiment, see what works, uh, see the position, how you, you can move your light closer to your subject, uh, further from your subject, how does that affect your set, how does that affect how your food looks, how, looks like, how does the beverage look like. So um, I think one of the best things you can do is just shoot as many test shots, because in that, in that um, sense you can be able to experiment as much as possible. And then uh, when you're in an actual set with a client, um, it, become, it becomes so much easier to execute. Um, so uh, hard lighting is also an option. Uh, I think mostly you can achieve that with a speed light. Uh, you can also do it with natural lighting, uh, but uh, one of the best ways to control in an art, when you're using artificial lighting, sp speed light or a strobe, with continuous lighting, uh, you can still achieve hard lighting, but um, you do not have the strength of the, depending on the kind of light you're using though, um, you, can, uh, you can still use it, but I'd uh, recommend a strobe or a flashlight or a speed light. So I just wanted to explain a bit about that before getting into light modifiers.